posture is probably the number one thing. Um, when I assess somebody in the clinic that may have a rotator cuff problem, okay, let's say they developed rotator cuff tendinitis, um, they've gone to see Dr. Levin, he's assessed it, it's definitely inflammation. We go through the series of, you know, what to do. Physical therapy might be the first thing to do. A cortisone injection might be an option later on. We go through the course. First thing I look at with a patient is how are they postured, okay? If somebody's going to be postured forward, okay, you're automatically going to set yourself up for what we call the impingement syndrome, which I'm sure some of you have heard of, okay? If you set yourself up into this posture forward, your arms can only raise up this high, okay, because the mechanics of your shoulder will not allow that to happen. So what's happening is, is this bony shelf that you have right here will prevent your arm from going up. As that's happening, all of your rotator cuff tendons, which are basically right around the outside of your arm bone here, your humerus, are pinching on that shelf. So if you go into the gym or you're on the bike or you're doing something and you're doing a rowing exercise or you're you know, forward and you're trying to do bicep curls, you're predisposing yourself to eventual injury. Okay? I've had a lot of personal trainers come up to me um, at various places from Woodfield to Boca West, et cetera, um, explaining to me you know, how important postural training is. And Dr. Levin keyed in on core exercises. Your core, which is basically this, your main trunk of your body, is the center of your body. Okay? Everything stems off of your core, your arms and your legs. If this doesn't work properly, these are not going to work properly, okay? Just as I explained, if your core is weak, your stomach muscles, your back muscles, and you flex forward, your shoulders are not going to be in the correct mechanical position to do the exercise or whatever you want to do. Tennis, swimming, um, golf, I use those examples. They're very much forward exercises. When you play golf, you're this way. When you play tennis, nobody plays tennis like this. People play tennis like this. When you go to make a swing with your tennis racket, you're usually forward, and you're making that move. So you have to be able to train your core, which encompasses many things. It's not just abdominal muscles, your stomach muscles. Everybody wants a six-pack, but your core does not just mean your abdominal muscles. Your core means your abdominal muscles, your lumbar muscles, which are your low back muscles, your thoracic muscles, which are your middle back muscles, and then your neck and scapular muscles, which are your shoulder blade muscles. Those are very important. All of those have to work in combination with each other. So that's why Carmine and I will emphasize um, so much on if somebody comes in with a shoulder problem, tendonitis like we talked about, we may spend half of our time working on that patient's posture and that patient's core, which may not at all emphasize their shoulder, but what we're doing is we're building the foundation so that we're putting their shoulders in the correct posture. Example, we may do some TheraBand exercises for their shoulders, or we may do some uh, knee extension if it's their knee or squats or whatever. We'll put them on one of those physio balls. Okay? Physio balls force you to sit up straight. If you slouch on a physio ball, you're going to fall right on the floor. So that right there, sitting on that ball, forces you to be upright in your posture. So, number one, we're addressing that. We may do a lot of rowing exercises. We emphasize a lot of upper back. We emphasize a lot of low back. And we will emphasize some stomach, okay? Um, the back muscles are key in your core, okay? If you're upright and you're doing things properly, you're going to be in good shape. And that has to be uh, emphasized in your program, whatever you do. Okay. Um, aquatics is excellent, excellent. We use it on everybody, okay? And to me, it makes sense, okay? You're in a less weight-bearing environment. You're not pounding on your joints, okay? I can tell you this. When Dr. Levin would do ACL surgeries or if we had kids that were out on the football team that were out for three to four weeks, in 25 minutes... I could have them begging for mercy after being in the pool. We put what we call an aqua jogger on, which is a, it's a belt that keeps you afloat, okay? 
and you can go into the deep end and it actually keeps your, basically your chest out of the water so you can do things like cross country skiing in the water. You can do high kicking in the water in terms of um, high speed training. You can do just general bicycle kicking in the water if you wanted to do. All of those things in the deep water you can also carry over to shallow water. Walking in the water, side walking, leg kicks, squats, all of those things in the water are therapeutically very beneficial because again you're not putting that extra stress on the joints and that's key. If you're recovering from something, the young man in the back said his calf muscle and, and something going on with his Achilles possibly, good alternative to jogging or to putting that much stress on is to getting in the water and working your legs, keeping your legs in shape without putting the compression and the stress on that particular joint. Okay, because a lot of the things we feel as a result of exercise injury is like Dr. Levin said, it's overuse. We do too much, too fast, incorrectly, something's gonna fail at some point. Okay? And fail meaning if you have an inflammation, you have to stop that trigger that's causing that inflammation. If you're doing overhead military press and you're feeling a clicking, popping, snapping, painful, stabbing, shooting pain in your shoulder, common sense, don't do it. Okay? Find an alternative. For every exercise you do in the gym, I'm telling you, there's three or four others that you can do to isolate the same muscle. You don't have to do heavy duty weights. Um, it really just depends on what your what your goal is in terms of being healthy. A good mix of things is, is important. You know, and Dr. Levin, you know, talked about that. Doing some cardiovascular, doing some core, and then doing your sports specific things if that's if that's important to you. So there's a lot of things to think about when we exercise and it's not just as simple as rolling out of bed and getting on the elliptical without stretching or you know going to the weight room and doing a lot of heavy duty bench pressing or whatever you've got to prepare yourself you've got to prepare your body uh, your joints your ligaments your tendons in order to prevent yourself from getting hurt because I tell people this all the time you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't you know, you all love to come to the Y, you love to exercise. So you're trying to make your body healthy. You want your lungs to be healthy, your heart to be healthy. You want all these things to be healthy. But if you do things incorrectly, then your joints become unhealthy because you're not doing them correctly. And unfortunately, we see it a lot in the clinic. And it's, uh, it's very preventable. And don't get me wrong, people in the clinic is good, but I'd like to keep people out of the clinic because... Um, it's simple education that if people knew, you know, and I know some of the trainers here are excellent, um, and, and getting that information, you know, it's, it's vital that you are taught the right way to exercise because going into a facility like this and seeing all of that equipment and it's overwhelming and what should I do, what shouldn't I do, I always recommend to patients that are going in for, for new exercise, like Dr. Levin said, take lessons, get a trainer, have them work with you even two, three, four times. It's not somebody that needs to coddle you along, if you will, but just teach you the right way to do things. And then every once in a while, have them update what you're doing so that they make sure you're doing it correctly. That's it. Thank you. This program was brought to you by the Boca Raton Community Hospital Foundation. Imagine what we can do together.